Hi, this is Mark Meyer from MarTech Hero. And in this short video, I'm going to show you how you can easily set a cookie based on a URL parameter or a query string and why as a marketer, this is very beneficial. So just to step back a little, a cookie is a small piece of data that's stored on the user's browser when they visit a website. So cookies can store various information such as user preferences, session data, and other data that can be used to enhance the user experience. And a URL parameter, also sometimes called a query string, is a way to pass information about a user's session through the URL. So parameters are typically key value pairs appended to a URL. For example, if you have a domain example.com, you could add a question mark and then the parameter and then equals the value. And we'll go into an example of this shortly. So why as a marketer would you care about this or why would you want to set a cookie? Well, there's actually several reasons to set a cookie. As far as email marketing goes, one reason I personally use to set cookies is because like many marketers, you might have a goal of getting visitors to your site to sign up for your newsletter or notification emails. So often the way this is accomplished is by using lead generation tools such as Optin Monster as shown here or like just Uno is another one, and there's countless other tools as well. These tools help marketers convert website visitors into subscribers and customers by offering various types of opt-in forms. So you see these a lot when you go to a site and a form pops up or is displayed asking you to sign up for their newsletters. It's a great way to capture the user's email address so you could send them special offers and you know your newsletter and what have you. But the problem is, is you don't want to keep bombarding that same person with that same pop-up form every single time they come to the site. Or if they do sign up for your newsletter, let's say, and they click on a link in the newsletter, the last thing you want to do is have a pop-up appear that says sign up for our newsletter, even though they just came from the newsletter. So that's not a great user experience. Lead generation tools try to prevent this from happening uh, on their own settings. But oftentimes, you might have a user that signed up for a newsletter, but then they open the newsletter that they received on a different device, maybe their mobile phone or a different computer, and then the lead generation tool wouldn't know that that's the same person inherently. So what we could do to prevent this is on the email that we send, we can add just a short little URL parameter and have that saved as a cookie. So let's bounce over to an email editor. I use Stripo in this example, which is a great tool. I actually have another video on the Smart Tech Hero uh, YouTube channel that walks through how to use Stripo. But basically any email designer does the same thing. So this is just an example newsletter I just threw together real fast for demonstration purposes. And as you can see, I have links to the site. So this particular link takes you to this article. Let's say I wanna add a URL parameter to this. So at the end of the link, I just simply type question mark. And then let's say this is the source is an email. So we want to say, let's just say SRC for source equals, and we'll just say email. So it's the same URL. And I just added this parameter or this query string, the question mark SRC equals email. So when this page is loaded or clicked on, that parameter is going to be displayed in the URL. But now we need to tell our landing page or our website what to do with this parameter right here. So to have this parameter we just created here written to the user's computer, we just need to put a little bit of code onto the website. Okay, here's the example code. Um, and there's many ways you can do this. This is the, just the way I did it. This is JavaScript. And I'll actually copy this code uh, in the description down below so you guys can see it better. But basically, all this is doing, this is JavaScript. And up here at the top, this JavaScript code is listening to the what's called the DOM content loaded event, which is fired when the initial HTML document has been completely loaded and parsed. Uh, it, it does that without waiting for the style sheets or images or subframes to finish loading. But once that DOM content loaded event is fired, the code then checks the URL of the page for any query string, which is the part that starts with a question mark. And it, see, it, it checks to see if it has a query string. 
If the query string exists, it then creates a new URL search params object with that query string. It then checks if there's a parameter named src in that query string, and if the value of src is equal to email. If the src parameter exists and the value is equal to email, it calls the set cookie function to set a cookie named src with the value email. And then this cookie is set to expire in 365 days. So the set cookie function sets a cookie with a specified name and value and expiration date. It creates a new date object, sets a time for the date object to the current time plus the number of days specified, and then sets the cookie with the specified name, value, and expiration date. And in this case, the path of the cookie is set to the root path, which means the cookie will be accessible from any page on the website. So in summary, the, the code is used to set a specific cookie if a certain parameter is present in the URL's query string when the page is loaded. So let me move this off again. So in this case, if, if we add that code to the website and then we add this question mark source equals email, when a visitor lands on the page, that little code I just showed you is going to check and it says, hey, there is a parameter called SRC and it is equal to email. So let's name a cookie, let's place a cookie on the computer with that value in it. So I hope that makes sense so far. So in this case, if someone clicks on a newsletter, we make the assumption they're subscribed to the newsletter. So we don't need to serve them this pop-up box ever that says, do you want to sign up for our newsletter? And each of these lead generation tools do this a little differently. Uh, but kind of the same way. There's something called an OptiMonster display rules. So over on the display rules pages, it just currently shows you when this sample pop-up would appear. So after a few seconds and they visited a few pages and if they haven't seen this particular campaign pop-up before, um, then it will show it to them. But we're, one, we're gonna edit this and we're gonna add a cookie variable. So we're, we're going to have it checked for the cookie. So here we type in cookie. And each of these lead generation tools do this a little differently, but they pretty much all, you know, same idea. So we, we're looking for a cookie and it asks us, what's the key? So the key is right after the question mark. So it's the source. And the value was email. But in this case, this particular screen says, when do you want this pop-up to appear? So we want it to appear when um, this does not equal email. If, if, the, if there's a value that says SRC and it says email, we do not want the pop-up to, sh to show up because they already came from our email, so we want to block it. We just switch this to it does not exactly match. And... So it looks like that. And if I hit save, so there it is. So it has all these above filters we already had on there. And then now it also checks. It says a cookie key matches SRC, but does not match email. So in the case, if they came from this newsletter, uh, it would not pass this test because it does match email. It came from email, so we do not want it to show up. So that's how this works. But like I said, that's just one of many, many, many examples that you could use uh, cookies for uh, as far as sending cookies on a site. I mean, it could, it could, uh, you could use it for personalizing and customizing the site, uh, different marketing campaigns you could set cookies for, referral programs, you could set langu language preferences, um, just a whole bunch of things. But that's just a quick overview of what it is, how you quickly set it, and one example of how I can use it. So I hope that all makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.